I don't think this will be the end of him being an owner in a sports space. I I wouldn't be surprised if eventually he does get into baseball, but I think this is the perfect opportunity for him to get some experience and right. add that to his resume um, come in the future when an opportunity to wouldn't that Wouldn't that be nice? Just be like, oh, I'm going to buy a team, and I think I'm going to buy another team <laughs> as well. Like, this is just the first of many teams. Yeah, next level money. <laughs> yeah, like next level money. That is certainly for sure. That's not Fubo TV money. Welcome on into Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. This is the show that sips and sits with the biggest names in sports and entertainment. And kitties, it's not wedding season. It is baseball season. We are seeing a full season of baseball bat off, kick off, whatever you want to call it. We only had a shortened season last year, but now we get the full thing. And last year in the height of the pandemic around May, I don't know, could have been September, whoever knows what month or day it is anymore. I was able to sit down and chat with none other than two-time Olympic medalist, MLB analyst on ESPN and softball hall of famer, Jessica Mendoza for a league that she's a board member of athletes unlimited. And I was so inspired by her, not just by her baseball analysis and by her background, but just by her as a person and as a woman. And I'm so excited to be able to have her on the show here today. Let's welcome on in Jessica Mendoza. Jess, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I mean, this is such, I feel like opening day, which was felt like just yesterday, but you know, 10, 11, 12 days ago, whatever it is, um, feels like Christmas. And I think more so because we didn't get a whole lot of baseball last year, just the 60 games. And, you know, what's exciting about opening day, it's like all these Christmas presents that you've yet to open. You don't know what's inside. You got 30 teams that every team has hope and potential. You really don't know what you're going to unwrap. So this time of year, it's, it's really fun just because, there is so much excitement. There was so much missing. We're getting fans back in the stands just to be able to hear the crowds, the energy. And it looks like we're going to have a regular baseball season, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, it is so exciting. And as you mentioned, last year we met virtually and that was in like May, maybe the height of the pandemic, which I feel as though was probably the, it feels like it's been the height of the pandemic the entire year. But you've been broadcasting, you told me right before we came on, you've been broadcasting from home this entire time. What's that been like? Yeah, it's been um, awesome. I mean, it, it was hard at first. I started doing actually KB, KBO games, so games in South Korea uh, when there was no Major League Baseball. In fact, it was the first time that we were televising any real major sports. And I was doing it in the middle of the night from my studio that was happened to be built. This is before COVID. They, wanted me do doing more just if there was a sports center news break that I could come on air and be able to talk about it. So I'd had this studio built and then we just added a couple monitors and a really cool ideas with zoom to be able to do the game over a monitor. And it, you know, it has its pros and cons, but I think what I've loved about it the most is, you know, it, it's integrated, you know, home life. I think so many people can relate to this, but home life with work life. So I can be hanging out with my kids. In fact, we've got, um, I'm t coaching my son's baseball team. I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I can do that go do the games. Um, and still it is a trip though, to be doing a nationally broadcast television game and then walk right out and, be cooking dinner or doing whatever with my family. It's, it's pretty crazy. That's crazy. It's also a very positive perspective on it because I've had a very, I've been in this stupid house, a house, I wish uh, room for like the last year. And I'm like, I just need to get out of here. But that is, that is great. And the fact that you've been able to be home with your family and you did mention before this that, oh yes, let's, yeah, <laughs> the most sorry. important part of the show, we drink on it. What are we drinking here today? I'm going to just go ahead and start drinking. <laughs> what do we uh, have? We've got, well, I know it's not as exciting because I'm coaching tonight. So I can't, I might be too crazy, but this is raspberry sparkling water. So that's... love it. That looks very tasty. I just have plain old sparkling water, but also I'm not coaching, but, and nor should I ever be, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I play for you. Team Julie. Thank you. Okay. Team Julie. <laughs> team, team drinks with banks. I've recruited yeah. my first member, a, a hall of famer. All right. We're on the <laughs> right track. Um, speaking of, uh, people I would also like to recruit to my team is one of your 
uh, co-analysts from ESPN, A-Rod, just bought, signed a letter of intent to buy the Timberwolves and the Lynx. I know he wanted to buy the Mets last year. Steve Cohen got that. But he got a he got a NBA team and a WNBA team. What about what do you like? What what kind of owner do you think A Rod would be like? Someone that's definitely hands on. I mean, he has the business side to him that he's incredibly passionate about with A Rod Court, um, which is obviously his corporate corporation that he he owns and gets super involved with. Um, but I, I being an athlete himself, it's interesting because I was thinking about this when the news came out versus the Mets. It's I know he also has a front office mind when it comes to baseball. He just understands kind of the blend of analytics and being, you know, a top level player. Um, And so with basketball, like I'm interested, you know, how much involvement he'll have from just analyzing athletes and understanding, you know, kind of that GM role, um, which won't be Mm -hmm. his, but I really felt like if it was a baseball team, he would have a hand in a lot of those trades, a lot of those free agent decisions with basketball. I think it's definitely first and foremost, the business side, obviously being an owner and, you know, secondly, for him to be able to to kind of have the two passions for him in in sports and business mesh together. I really feel like the Mets, it coming close enough for him was like that, okay, I really, this is something I want to do. When's Mm -hmm. my next opportunity? And I don't think this will be the end of him being an owner in a sports space. I I wouldn't be surprised if eventually he does get into baseball, but I think this was the perfect opportunity for him to get some experience and right. add that to his resume um, come in the future when an opportunity to wouldn't that Wouldn't that be nice? Just be like, oh, I'm going to buy a team and I think I'm going to buy another team as well. <laughs> like, this is just the first of many teams. Yeah, next level money. <laughs> yeah, ne- next level money. That is certainly for sure. That's not Fubo TV money. Anyway, let's get to this game we want to play. Want to get some, as you mentioned, it's like Christmas Day. It's, we, you know, we don't know what we're going to get yet from some of these teams and and some of these different divisions we're going to play a quick game called home run or strikeout so i'm going to say a statement and if you agree with it you're like home run that baby's going out of the park yes i agree and if you don't agree with it you're like strikeout i that's that's you're out whatever the baseball umpires do you're out okay (laughs) so yeah (laughs) but a little twist do you know? Um, anyways, we are not drinking on the show. Okay, first statement. <laughs> the LA Dodgers will repeat as World Series champions. Well, I mean, home run and that that's the easy statement for sure. They're the best team in baseball on paper. They're the defending champions. Um, but I'm going to also go strike out with that I don't think it's that simple. Like I, I, I picked another, I picked actually the Braves to take on, um, to, to win the national league and then ultimately the world series just to be different. Um, but that's my portion of just like the best team isn't always necessarily winning at all. All right. We'll have to see about this one. Jacob deGrom's talent is being wasted on the Mets. (laughs) <laughs> um strike out i think them the mets getting francisco lindor was huge a new owner you mentioned earlier in steve cohen clearly is willing to spend some money something we've not seen in that organization for a long time I mean, just the fact this is the biggest deal since david wright which was like a third of the deal that francisco lindor and i know it's not just lindor but the fact is is this is the changing um, organization mm. and it's in New York City. I think Jacob Degrom still gets a ton of attention because he is there, um, and I, I'm I'm glad he's there. So strike up. <laughs> that was, that was a per, that was like a perfect way to answer that question in a positive way. Okay, we're gonna have to do these very quickly. NL MVP is gonna be Mookie Betts. Ooh, um, home run. One reason why. I mean, he's ridiculous. So yes. I don't think that's a far stretch. <laughs> yeah, I love really that. Good. He's ridiculous. <laughs> also, AL MVP will be Mike Trout. <laughs> oh, <Home> run. <laughs> He's been top three for like the last decade. So, I mean, there's so many other guys that obviously could, could win, but those two are the top, I would say. If you're picking top five players in baseball, even top three, those two names are in it. So you're good. Okay. 
And just as we we send this one off into the ether, the Toronto Blue Jays will not be that bad. They will be ahead of schedule. Home run. Oh, yeah. I like them. I mean, yeah. Did you see them against the Yankees opening weekend? Like, that oh, was awesome. yeah. Yeah. They look pretty good. Pretty, yeah. pretty good. And especially when George Springer is back, they are going to be unstoppable and they won't make the playoffs, but they'll be better than they were last year, hopefully. Okay, that was Home Runners Strikeout with Jessica Mendoza. We've got a whole lot more when we return on Drinks with Thanks. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Drinks with Thanks. I'm JSB, joined by two-time Olympic medalist Jessica Mendoza, MLB analyst on ESPN. And Jessica, when we talked last year with Athletes Unlimited, the softball league for women, we were discussing how you, you mentioned that when you first started as an analyst, you felt your gender was really highlighted. Uh, and and I, I watched our, our interview back and you, you had a, an incredible quote that said like, Never had my gender been pointed out so much. I'm like the mascot for being a female. Those distractions have never been louder. And it made me question, do I deserve to be here? Which is, you know, an awful feeling for you to have had to experience because of course you deserve to be there, but also not one that's um, immune to just that, that situation. So many women have felt like they don't belong because they are not a man in a male dominated world. Where do you feel you are right now? How do you feel you are right now as it pertains to being a baseball analyst who also happens to be a woman? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's so many more women every day. I mean, just getting involved in sports, involved in so many different areas. You know, Kim Ng now being a GM of the Marlins for the first time and that's the goal is just, let's just get enough people, <laughs> not even women, minorities, but just humans, right. That, you know, really represent our country, represent our world to also look the same in sports and those that consume it. Um, because everyone is watching sports, but we don't always see them on the other side. And I've just seen it become more of a noticeable difference, even in production meetings, when we're talking about things, there isn't always the apology of like, Oh, I cussed and, Jess is here, the female, and you're not supposed to cuss. It from my mom always told me never cuss, and so now I'm worried. You know, there, there's always these little things that it's like remind you that you're a woman, and I found that they become less and less. And I, I think part of me too is I'm less. Um, I don't pay attention to it as much. Also, in the very beginning, I was hyper aware of what people were saying, how they were looking at me. It, you know, if they were talking about me, what the reactions were, I was reading more about it. And now it's like, I, none of that helps. So I'm just mm-hmm. going to do my thing. So I, I really feel like now it's, it's slowly changing, but it helps the more that we can just have this diversity. So we're just more focusing on the sport itself and not who's talking about it. Exactly. Just even that statement of like being, a, I felt like I was a mascot for being female. It's so, it, it just hits a nail on the head of, of the idea of like, oh, you're gender is the first thing people see versus everything else that you have done. And I'm curious for you uh, from a female perspective, though, we've seen uh, sort of a societal reckoning, have you, uh, against sexual harassment in MLB. You know, we look at people like Jared Porter and Mickey Calloway and the reporting done from The Athletic on what has happened and how they've treated women in the sport. When when you heard of these allegations and, and the news broke, how did it make you feel? I'm mad, frustrated, uh, just that this is stuff that is happening in baseball and sport. I can't speak for all sports, but it, it is. And, you know, within baseball, it's like, you know, I'm aware of it. You know, so many of us are aware of it. I would say it'd be hard to not be involved in the sport of baseball and not see or hear things that are like, that's not okay. Um, but to see, you know, with your reporter, Mickey Calloway, just, you know, the fact that these are authoritative positions, this isn't just the presumptive player where it's more expected, never okay, but it's like, well, yeah, players all the time, but you actually have, you know, coaches, you have front office people that are, are really in charge. And it, it just, it pissed me off. Like, I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. And we need to be at the forefront of being proactive and not reactive because everyone reacts the right way. Oh, this is, this is, should never happen. Let's fire them. Let's get rid of them. This is never, you know, well, how are we training 
all of like front office, everybody in sexual harassment, when you see it, how you handle that, you know, is there a safe space for women to be able to go to talk to someone where it isn't, you know, HR all the time, but actually someone that you can trust within the organization um, right. and ask questions. Hey, you know, I'm getting these text messages because Julie, a lot of it is really gray. And I know in the case of Porter, especially, it was very like not gray. <laughs> like what he did was like, yeah, that's not okay. But yeah. there's so much more out there that just kind of touches the line, you know, crosses it for a second, comes back. And it's never the full blown like picture or something obvious. And that still isn't okay. Um, because the right. more that we allow the gray stuff, the more that we get people that think it's totally fine for everything else. So then, you know, you said that we've got to like, we have to educate or we have to stop this. Like where, where do you go from here? Hearing from more women. I think, you know, every team has their own way of um, sexual harassment training. And in some cases it's rolling in like the old TV, the <laughs> DVD, you know, putting in this film or video, this, you know, 20 minute thing. That's another meeting, another want, want, like everyone's on their phones, totally checked out and they're going over sexual harassment protocol. And I, one of my suggestions was like, have a female stand in front of the room, whether it's someone who works within the organization. I volunteered, shoot, I would go around, Julie, I'm sure you have had, you know, situations, mm -hmm. you, of course. Share, you know, and if they could hear from a real live person, like, this is how this makes me feel. Like, I know you guys are, you know, it's kind of funny to like make a comment on how I look or, you know, but this is how it makes me feel. And we're talking about sexual harassment protocols. Like these are actually real people. And this is the consequence of every action and what it leads to. And it's not so much the person that says it all the time, because you know, those people you might not be able to necessarily change, but it's mm -hmm. the people that are in the room that kind of just ignore it, laugh at it, whatever, they would never do it, but they're like, I don't know what to do. And for them to really understand and feel Hey, this is, this is what we're talking about. These are real human beings. I think is is way to get ahead of it instead of just telling someone after the fact. Right. Yeah. Because sort of that behavior has become so normalized in that locker room, quote unquote culture. And even, um, females feel sometimes like, Oh, well, that's just how that person is, or that's just how it is there. It's like, that's not okay. That behavior, that verbiage is not okay. And I think it is really great to your point The the reporting from the athletic, uh, Brick Rowley, Katie Strang, Ken Rosenthal as well, bringing these, these stories to light because it is something that isn't just in baseball. It's in literally every sport and many workplaces as well. So powerful stuff coming from you, Jess, and we really appreciate your openness and honesty on this position. We have a whole lot more we want to get to on drinks with banks. Don't go anywhere guys. We'll be back after this. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Thanks. I'm JSB and we have baseball analyst and also two-time Olympic medalist Jessica Mendoza with us here today. Tokyo 2020 was postponed and it's still called Tokyo 2020, but it is 2021. And it looks like as though we are going to have an Olympics this year. I know that you have spoken with a number of members from Team USA. What kind of challenges have they gone through in this past year being a like having the Olympics postponed com now going to be competing in them. And if there are also any positives to the Olympics being postponed a year. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's been definitely more negative than, than positive as far as just the reaction from players. And I know as far as the softball Olympians, he was everything from Kat Osterman wanting to have her first child and postponing family decisions. And then, you know, Danielle Laurie, who is a mother of two, she's a Canadian Olympic pitcher, and you know her really evaluating, can I do this another year? She didn't know if she could, and having to leave her family for six months at a time, you know, it, there was so much frustration. Although I would say Daniel Spaulding, who's a shortstop for the U.S. Olympic team, she tore her ACL the first game of their Olympic tour, was probably going to have to sit out the Olympic Games. So I think for her, it was probably the one positive is we're coming up on the year anniversary of her ACL surgery. Wow. And she will be at 100% able to play. Um, so things like that with injuries. Um, and, you know, you never know individually too, I, you know, psychologically, if there was some, you know, benefit to maybe having that pause 
and to them now heading to the Olympics with no fans in attendance and the games, the games itself have fans at them normally. And then the Olympic games have the opening ceremonies, the closing ceremonies, winning a medal in front of people. What do you think that this whole experience would be like to do it without having anyone there? Awful. <laughs> I mean, the game itself, and obviously you talk to major league baseball players, so many, you know, athletes from this last year, there is, a, I mean, you're, you're winning a gold medal, you're playing for your country. There's so much that still exists. And to the credit of a you know female athlete, you're not always playing in front of like tens of thousands of people anyway. But what makes the Olympics the Olympics, like I remember 40,000 screaming fans in China and it, it because you've never played in front of fans like that, it makes it the Olympics, you know, it makes it special. My heart hurts more for not there not being fans because there might still be, you know, Japanese residents or, but actual family, like your family, like your husband, you know, in some cases your child, you know, like the mom and dad that got like traveled all over to get, you know, the, the payoff is for them to, to be there. And they're not going to be. And so that it breaks my heart for the families because it, it is literally the reward of all rewards is to see your child, your spouse, whoever do the thing that they love right in front of you and not on a screen. Wow. I hadn't even thought of the family aspect of it, but that is so true. And for so many of these sports, it's very uh, many years of thankless work and I, I can't even imagine, but you've got two medals at your house there and we will see if team USA is able to add one other to their list. We have to take a quick time out. We'll be back with more with Jessica Mendoza. Hey guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking here with MLB analyst Jessica Mendoza. Jess, where can we find you next? I uh, will. I'll still be doing our Major League Baseball coverage. Um, you can find me every week, but I actually get to go to my first game in person um, as a fan. So I'm up here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to go throw out the first pitch at a Mariners Dodgers <sighs> game next week. Yeah, I'm like super pumped. Are you nervous? Heck no. Like, <laughs> that person, so you know, I love it because they always set you up like halfway from home plate to the mound. They're like, oh, here's your spot. And every time I'm like, I got it from the mound. We're good. Like, oh, it's yeah. You know? um, I even threw out one at a Dodger game, nine months pregnant. Like I was like a week from my due date. And I mean, that's spot, amazing. I had like super baby bump, went all the way to the mound, like high leg kick, like fired it in there. That is so um, badass. Yeah, so I'm super pumped to be able to to go to a game. It's weird. I'm calling games, doing them from home, but I'm going to go to a game as a fan, see the defending champ Dodgers against the Seattle Mariners, which is our local team up here, and hoping that the weather's great. There's hardly few, very few places that are better that I feel like taking in a baseball game in Seattle. So be it fun. is it is fantastic there, and that is such an odd situation that you haven't even you broadcast baseball, you haven't been to a ballpark, but you're going on a date there, and that's yeah. just what life is these days. <laughs> Um, Jess, we know that you have to get going for work. Thank you so much for joining us here. Really appreciate everything that you do for the sport and for women. And we can't wait to see what you do with the rest of your career and this season with baseball. If your strikeouts or home runs do come to fruition. Yes. No, thanks for having me. And um, you can find me too on Instagram, Jess Mendoza too. Or on Twitter, just at Jess Mendoza. Thanks for drinking with me. <laughs> awesome. And guys, you know where to find us on social at Fubo Sports to see all of our old episodes. And until next time, bottoms up, bitches. <laughs> yeah.